Welcome, my name is Charles Lee. I'm with Temple College Vocational Nursing Program. This is the information session for the nursing program. I'd like to welcome you. We do have two programs, um, Bell County at the main campus, Temple College in Temple, and Temple College at the Taylor campus. These are the two LVN program sites. We also have general education sites at Hutto and Cameron where some of your non-nursing classes can be taken. Uh, the program administration, I'd like to introduce you, uh, Mr. Bond. He is our director. He is located in Temple. And uh, as I stated, I'm Charles Lee, and I am the lead instructor down here in Taylor. There is approximately 10 to 12 nursing faculty members supported by two secretaries, one at each campus. The vocational program that we have is 12 months. It is a full-time accelerated program, and that is being in 12 months. It's 47 semester hours. It is a summer, fall, and spring program. And it does require a lot of time studying and participating, so we do consider it a full-time program. We will go our, over the hours and talk about the semester hours and workload with that. Let's talk about the application process. Um, because there is a history of competitive testing, we do have to use a system uh, that we stick to for applicants who apply for the program. Uh, the first step is to be in the Temple College system and how you do that is to complete the Temple College admission procedure. If you're already taking classes at Temple College or if you've taken classes at Temple College you will have a TCID number and that is what we're looking for. It does not cost anything to apply to Temple College. You can do that either at any campus or on the internet. Um, if you're using a Texas Common application for higher education, public, uh, public schools, uh, let's say you applied at University of Texas or another uh, college, then we can use the Common application for that. You would just need to go online and indicate that. The second and big step getting into our program is to test. We are talking about the HESI A2 test, and it is giving in Temple, not in Taylor, the dates, there is a window that we take the test October through November ending on December 5th. These are the dates in which you can take the test. And unfortunately, we do not test year round. Again, this test is only given in Temple at the main campus. You do not need an appointment. However, it is called the HESI A2. It is computerized and you do need to allow yourself two to three hours to take the test. The testing center will not administer the test on Fridays or generally start past 2 p.m. So you want to make sure that you are thinking about the test and preparing for that test being Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 2. Also keep in mind, if you're planning on going near Thanksgiving uh, week, we do close that um, short period Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for Thanksgiving. The third step is if you take the test in Temple and you score above a 70, that is a composite score, and I'll be talking more about that in a moment, then you can literally drive or walk across the street of, camp, of the campus there, of First Street, and into the Nursing Education Center, the NEC building, pick up a one-page application, fill that application out. You can mail it in or send it in. We do need the application by December 6th in supporting documents. That application does not ask you specifically which campus you want to be on. We look at your residence, your zip code, whether you're in district or uh, in the service area, which is important for the Taylor campus. And that would include areas such as Temple ISD. And near the Taylor campus, you're talking about Hutto ISD and Taylor ISD, as well as some other towns, uh, would get you considered in district or in service area. Uh, further questions on that, we can direct that to a financial aid office here in a moment. I will put it up for you. If you're already taking courses at Temple College or you have applied and been accepted, uh, does not constitute acceptance into the nursing program. Keep in mind that Temple College nursing program, be it the RN or LVN program, we are a college within a college. We have our own rules and our own set of requirements such as transcript requirements and testing um, what not. So there is a history of competitive applications that I mentioned. Um, so it is important that you maximize your scores when you're turning stuff in 
and adding stuff up, we want to make sure that you're maximizing your points. If everything is said and done and we have multiple people with the same score, we have to unfortunately look at ways to break a tie. So it is important that you get documents turned in. You test as soon as you can when you fulfill your uh, prepared for that. Okay, again, the dates are October 1st through December 5th. The last day of we, we can get those applications is December 6th, and that uh, is by 5 p.m. at the latest. The test does cost $45. In how you handle that $45, you do not need an appointment, but you enter one college center. It is a building in the middle of campus. You're going to go into the cashier or bursar's office, pay for the $45. It's on the ground floor by the back doors. They'll give you a receipt. They do take credit cards, cash, um, and I believe checks. And you can come upstairs to the second floor to the testing center and set for the exam. It is a first come, first serve basis, so you uh, really don't need an appointment. However, you do need to plan accordingly with parking, child care, et cetera. Plan to spend at least two to three on the, on the furthest end of time given the test. The test areas, a lot of people want to know, well, what am I going to be tested over? Well, really, we're looking at three big areas. We're looking at everyone's worried about the math. There is bas basic arithmetic, uh, metric system, whole numbers to fractions, fractions to whole numbers, uh, division, subtraction. And then the most difficult part of the math is introductory algebra, which is really solving for x. If you can solve for x and do intro algebra, that is the most difficult of the math portion. Also on the test, the HESI test, you'll be required to uh, test for vocabulary of the um, English language, and that's the American English language, not necessarily the Queen's English. Uh, and spelling, comprehension, uh, grammar, conclusions, implications, and understanding. So this reading comprehension could be a paragraph, a sentence, or sentence structure. You're asked to recall or identify certain parts of that. Uh, these are the three areas. If you buy a study guide, don't let it scare you because in the study guide, which I'll show you a picture of in just a moment, um, there is physics, chemistry, biology. We are not requiring you at this time to test on that. Okay. Keep in mind an optimum score is above 70. That is a composite score. So what that means is if you make a 80 on math and you make a 60 on reading comprehension and a 90 on uh, use of words and grammar, those three areas will be added together and averaged. So it is a composite score. We're looking for 70 or above. And to be quite honest, you really need to place as high as you can, the best you can, and really strive for a good score. Um, a lot of times people that do make 70 or slightly above are not really competitive, and you'll see why uh, here in a minute. The higher you make, the more points you get. So you do want to do as good as you can. So there is a study guide. It runs anywhere from $38 to $48, depending on where you buy it. You can buy it online at Barnes & Nobles, Hastings, Amazon, uh, perhaps eBay. However, the bookstore will get you the most updated version. The bookstore in Temple and the bookstore in Taylor. They do keep this book in stock. There is a couple editions out. Keep in mind, we want the latest edition, which is of a, a purple color with a brown or tan uh, stripe. If you have a yellow and blue HESI study guide, it's slightly older. Um, so let me show you what that book looks like. It's, it's purple and it has this beige uh, kind of avocado green stripe on it. And that is the third edition. That is currently what the bookstore sells. Um, if you are really worried about the math or English portion of that, I really recommend that you visit the um, Educational Service Center. And this is located in Temple, and they can work off appointments or first come, first serve. And their hours are kind of specific. So please note that it's Monday through Thursday, very similar to the test. And Monday and Wednesday evenings for those of you that can only get away Monday and Wednesday evenings. And the cool thing about this Learning Assistance or Education Assistance Center is that they will tutor you and help you. They know exactly what subjects are being asked of you on the HESI A2 test. And they're very good about um, working students through that. They also have produced a videotape 
which they can show you um, copies of that. You can also stop by the nursing offices to view that. Again, the study guide looks like that, 38 to 48 dollars. If for some reason you have applied at another campus and another uh, program, say another college or university, and you have a HESI A2 score and it's within 12 months, uh, if it's only a year old or less, we will in some, some circumstances accept that score. Um, if it's the same test, it does need to be HESI A2 and it must be a no calculator given test. That will be on the transcript if the testing center will give you a transcript of what you took with your scores. Um, then you would visit with our director, Mr. Bond, and he can approve, and only he can approve, uh, substituting that score for our HESI A2 test. It has happened. Um, some people have taken it uh, unknowingly at another college, and it's the same test. So we will work, you, work with you on that, so long as the test is not a year old. A uh, question I get a lot is, well, I took the HESI A2 last year and I made a good grade. Can I use it again? You can use it again as long as it's not past 12 months. So you'd want to apply before your application date last year, be it a week, a month, or just a few days. As long as you get it into the Temple office, um, you will not have to retake. So with us, you can only take the HESI A2 one time, and that is with the Temple College Testing Center. The testing center is, um, does have proctors. You are watched carefully. Please make sure you do have at least one or two forms of ID uh, and, of course, the $45 to pay for the exam. If you would like to uh, transfer any credits, then we would need college transcripts as well as high school transcripts and or a GED, General, uh, Development, General Education Development Certificate. We actually need the scores, the math and English scores, to see that you pass your GED and or high school transcript and or college transcript. And I'll talk more about the tr college transcripts from prior uh, coursework in a minute. If you, by chance, attended high school or college in a foreign country, then we would need to have those transcripts evaluated and sealed and hand carried or mailed to the nursing program. Now, there used to be testing uh, evaluation centers throughout Texas, and there still are, but uh, some are independent. We want to make sure that they're on a list of NACES accredited facilities. There is not one in Austin, but there are several in Dallas, Houston uh, area. So to get the latest one, they do charge for this service. Uh, there is no uh, ties to Temple College for this service, but we do ask you have foreign transcripts accredited here at NACES.org, and that's www.NACES.org. Um, that may take a little time, so you want to plan accordingly having those transcripts evaluated so that you can turn in your coursework uh, with your application. If you have any college credits that want to transfer, for example, in the nursing program, the LVN program, we only have two courses that are not nursing-based, and that would be uh, anatomy and physiology, which is a biology, biology course, and a general computer course. Um, there is a computer course that, that we take you or we ask you to complete. It's for information technology. These two courses can be substituted in some cases from other colleges or universities. And what we're looking for is the same course, the uh, Texas Commonality Code. For example, Intro to Anatomy and Physiology Bio 2404. That is the number and course we call it at Temple College, as well as Austin Community College, as well as a lot of other community college. That is a transferable course. Our computer science course can be transferred if you have something very similar, at least two hours or three hours, a basic computer information uh, course. Um, Pretty much anything that we can validate that is generally acceptable, it's similar to ours, that is something the director of the nursing program can give credit for. Now with these courses, if you're trying to substitute them, we obviously need an official transcript sealed, one to Temple College, one to the nursing program. The nursing program has to have our own transcript, and you will have to fill out a course substitution form. You can visit, visit either campuses for that. Uh, the front desk, or you can probably have um, admission and records mail you one. And hopefully we can get those online if they're not already online. 
Keep in mind, if you'd like to bring in a biology course that you took uh, for credit, it needs to be uh, no later than 10 years old. And uh, the science courses, of course, if you transfer 10 years on that, but if you transfer any nursing courses, then it cannot be past two years uh, time. So we're continuing to talk about how we get our points and, and how we um, accumulate those. Keep in mind that a background check is done prior to coming in the nursing program. It is through the state of Texas Board of Nursing as well as DPS that they contract and the FBI. Um, we have to tell you that if you have been um, barred from a healthcare facility that we go to as part of our clinical rotations, for example, the Veterans Hospital or a Scott and White facility, um, then it can affect your ability to stay in the courses, finish the courses and graduate if there is an issue with either past employment um, and or criminal background that forbids you to go into those facilities. You have to have those experiences and it's really hard to work around that. So we'll talk more about the background check uh, in a moment. Let's talk about how we add up the points because that's where I was headed with this. We want to get the maximum points on our test. So how we do that is we do as best as we can on the test and if we do really good we use a matrix and that matrix will give you certain points. For example, and this is just hypothetical, let's say you make between a 95 and a 100 you would get six points and then if you make between 90 and 95 you would get five points. So it is a metric, it is a scale, it is, uh, we do change it periodically but that scale tells us if you only make a 70, you're probably going to have one point. So to get from one to six points, you do need to do well on the test. Um, when you do take the HESI, you do know exactly what your score is. You do get a printout immediately, and they also uh, forward or email those reports to the nursing program for us. Okay, how else can we get points? There's two other ways. Um, coursework and residency. So let's talk about coursework. Here's the Biology 2404 which is an introduction course, introduction to A&P and you can take that online at Temple College or on site both at Taylor and Temple and possibly other sites Cameron and Hutto. Also the computer course. Our course is called ITSE 1294 and it is given uh, pretty much every eight weeks around the calendar, all three semesters and that course can be also taken online or in person. I would only recommend the online intro to A&P to someone who's had uh, some medical training perhaps um, so that you can stay up with the class because there is some lab time required and uh, it can be difficult if you have no medical background. So these two courses are co-requisites in the program. They're not really considered prerequisites because it is possible to get in the LVM program if you score well enough on your HESI A2 test. So let's say you scored the average 88, 85, something like that. That's a pretty typical score. And you have these two courses completed prior to applying to our program, then that would give you two additional points. There's one point for each course. So that is another way. That puts you at eight points total. And that's a really good score. Okay? So just on this page alone, we can accumulate up to eight points. Now, if you're wanting to substitute these courses in order to get points for these, you would need to make sure that the director of the VN program in Temple, when you apply, they must have knowledge of these courses. They can't award you points if you don't advise them. So they need transcripts and a, a little posting note or something to say, I've taken these or in the progress so that they can look at that. It is very important that they are notified. So you want to stay in contact during that application period. So another question we get a lot is, can I take 2401, which is Anatomy and Physiology 1? Well, you can, and we will give you one point. However, you would need to finish Anatomy and Physiology 2, 2402, okay, prior to coming to the LVM program. So you have to plan this carefully. If you take AMP1 to substitute for this, you have to take AMP2 because this class does, believe it or not, um, cover anatomy and physiology. And it is a very shortened class for healthcare professionals. 
So AMP 1 and 2 actually is not much different from this, except it's two separate courses, two separate semesters. If you plan on bridging someday to the RN program, be it an associate degree or bachelor degree, or to the paramedic program, you know, you're going to need this AMP 1, AMP 2, not necessarily intro. So be thinking about that when you are making your decision. Make sure that you have AMP 1 and 2 prior to starting the nursing program. Because once you start the nursing curriculum, there is not time to take AMP2. Uh, you will be really tied to your clock. And the last and final ninth point can be given through residency. Now, residency is a service area. It is slightly different from taxing area. And I, I can't really explain too much of it because I don't work for that department. But I will say if you're in um, Taylor, Hutto, Rockdale, Thorndale, Thrall, um, that would be our service area for the Taylor campus and so you would get an extra point of consideration. The service area is something determined by legislature so it's not uh, we're showing favoritism to certain cities or communities. It is legislative boundaries that we um, are called service area. Now in the Temple service area it's Temple ISD. Is there any more? Belton ISD and Troy. Cameron so Cameron, Troy, Belton, and Temple. And now we have the highway that connects Temple to Taylor, and that's Highway 95. So the school district's going up 95, Granger and Bartlett, Holland and Academy, there within our service area. Now if you go into Round Rock, um, Cedar Park, Pflugerville, Colleen, you have other community colleges that is their service area. So that is how you get this one point. Now keep in mind it is different from tax area you still may get charged out of tuition. Um, that is for Temple ISD and Hutto ISD at this time. If you have failed another nursing program in vocational nursing, be it with us or a transfer, if you're transferring from another program, we need those transcripts. And unfortunately, we, we will take a point away from your total score because you have failed a program. And if you want to compete and reapply, you really need to uh, maximize your points here. So you have a total of nine points that you can accumulate. We get your applications. We add up those nine points uh, if it falls out that high for you. And then we make a list of the campus based on where you live, how many seats we have available at the Williamson County site, being Taylor, and the Bell County site, being Temple. We try to match you to either campus the closest. There are some uh, communities like Georgetown Geographically, it's the same distance to Temple or Taylor, so we try to give some flexibility there in what the student may want, or it may be what our needs are as a college and which campus we can place you. The good thing about it is we don't let you hang, we do send out letters. <clears throat> we send out basically three types of letters. Yes, you're in the program, and that letter um, is a little thicker and it has some forms you're going to have to do such as you need to go get a physical, you need to get your background check drug, your drug screen, stuff like that. There's a shorter letter, of course, which says, I'm sorry you did not meet the, uh, the wait list or the primary list this year. And then there's a letter that says you're on the alternate list. If you're on the alternate list, we do, just FYI, we do go through quite a bit of alternates because things happen between the time you're notified and June. You have a a uh, four or five month span in marriage, divorce, moving, jobs, things happen. So we certainly understand that and that's why we do have an alternate list. But we do send those letters out end of January, 1st of February. When you get that acceptance letter, it is conditional and we have some uh, things that you're going to have to get signed by a physician or a nurse practitioner. And what it says is that you're in good physical and mental shape to participate in a nursing program. They have done a physical exam on you, and we're also looking for immunizations, which I'll put up here, that are specific to healthcare in Texas and nursing. Um, and of course, a background check, which I mentioned, a passport photo that will be uh, required when you start the program, and then current on your shots. Okay, keep in mind that uh, in 2011, you know, we started drug testing prior to going into clinical areas. And we do have different ways to drug test, and we have used different companies, and that does kind of change year to year. So what we'll say at this point is we do uh, perform a drug screen on nursing applicants, 
and you will be notified of which program gets uh, what screening at what time. Because um, we have multiple healthcare programs, we use multiple companies, but we do drug screen. If you have a positive drug screen, then we cross that bridge when we get there. Um, if you're on medication, then of course you would let us know uh, that would result in that of drug screen. But it can prevent you from coming to the nursing program if it's an Ill uh, illegal or illicit substance. Okay, so let's talk about those shots. These are your standard shots that you would get in public schools, in some post-public schools, and then of course you have healthcare required shots, such as uh, legislative, legislative required shots, such as meningitis, which we'll talk about. But the hepatitis B series is a three-shot series, and it's the biggest one for healthcare workers because it's time-based. And if you wait until you get your acceptance letter to nursing school, you might have a hard time getting those three shots in before we actually start school. And you want to have those shots done around the 1st of July because we actually go into the clinical areas um, of hospitals, nursing homes, and you have to be current on those shots. If you're not, we cannot let you participate in the program. So, three shots, we'll talk more about it in a minute. We need at least two verified doses of varicella. And there are some exceptions about um, um, physician signed um, varicella verification that you've had it. Mumps, rubella, measles, a DT booster, and a, and a tuberculosis skin test. That is the little skin test that blisters up on your arm. Um, we need to have that current for a year. It expires every year. If you've, if you've tested positive or you do test positive, then we would need a radiology report from a chest x-ray or CAT scan, and those are good for two years uh, accordingly uh, by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control at this time. Okay, the hepatitis B, you would get your schedule, uh, your first shot, let's say you get your first shot in February, then you could get your second shot in March, but then you have to wait, normally you have to wait six months. Some doctors will do what's called a rapid set, a physician's office, and that's speeding it up to four months. So you're still looking at between four and six months to safely get the hepatitis B vaccine. So you do need to plan for that. I recommend you start getting that. If you're interested in any health care, you're going to need that. Any nursing program, you're going to need that. You can't work and you get the shots. Your private doctor's office, um, Lone Star Circle of Care, which is a health clinic contracted, uh, for public health. You can get those at the Williamson County or Bell County Public Health Clinics. Um, you can also get those at ready centers like in CVS or Walgreens, nurse practitioner, uh, urgent care centers, pretty much anywhere where you have medical care. So this is the most important for time management. You want to make sure you get that. Also, prior to the first day of school, it is your responsibility as an incoming student to make sure you're certified in CPR. The CPR um, is for healthcare providers. It needs to be American Heart Association healthcare providers. It is a two year certificate. We make sure that it is not uh, Heart Start CPR by American Heart and make sure it is not Red Cross Professional Rescuer. Um, we can no longer accept that. It, it is a requirement that we use all on the same page, and that's healthcare programs and hospitals were really trying to use American Heart Association. Um, if you expire during the year while you're in nursing school, we'll give you the resources or recertify you here. However, prior to coming in, there are multiple places for you to get certified. Temple College does offer that, both at the Taylor and Temple campus. Here's the phone numbers. You have two phone numbers available to call. They're usually offered this as a evening and weekend type of course. It is $55 currently, and that is subject to change. And you need to plan for about six hours. If you are recertifying, you need to plan for about two to three hours of time. If they cannot assist you or the classes are full, please check with American Heart Association. They do have a Bell County office as well as an Austin, Texas, and Williamson County office. Um, most hospitals do this for a fee as well as certain EMS programs such as Travis County. Uh, there are a lot of individuals that do this, so I recommend you please call American Heart Association if we cannot work with you uh, on the courses that we offer. They don't fit your time slot. 
Financial aid is available and, and that is for qualified students. And what I mean by financial aid is some students can qualify for student loans, both subsidized and unsubsidized. That would be Texas Stafford loans. Uh, some students can qualify for Pell Grants based on financial need. Uh, some students can also apply for state assisted such as Texas Workforce. And those things all have to be applied for through financial aid. If you haven't started a FAFSA, that's a, a FASFA, that is a um, government agency, you need to start a FAFSA file and financial aid can help you do that and get the ball rolling for you to attend college. Um, because it does take time being the government is involved to get funds for college. If you do get student aid, it can help fund your education here at Temple College and help you purchase books because that is a big part of your program as well as uniforms. Okay, nursing faculty, if you happen to uh, call uh, our secretaries at the nursing office and the instructors yourself, we really can't answer financial aid questions. We are not in that field and, and we don't want to steer you wrong. So please uh, don't hesitate to call financial aid. Their office is uh, 8321. This is their extension number. Even for Taylor, please call this number, 254. That's the area code. Okay, after completing the 12-month program, it allows you, if you're certified and the college endorses your graduation, to take the National Council on Licensing Examination Practical Nurse Test. And that is equivalent to the LVN uh, rank, practical nurse and a LVN. So that test is the same test given in all 50 states plus the nation of Canada um, for licensure to practice practical or vocational nursing throughout America or Canada. The board, prior to letting you take that exam, they make sure that you have graduated and that you do not have any outstanding criminal arrest, prosecutions, adjudications, or anything uh, prior to graduation and um, then at that time they will send you notification and you can take this test and become a licensed vocational nurse. Now what I mentioned about criminal backgrounds is here. If you do have a criminal background it really doesn't matter if it's a misdemeanor, a felony, if it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you were 17, you were 19, um, Texas, Minnesota, Florida, if you have ever been arrested, there are eligibility issues. And so on our website, when you're looking at our website, there are certain questions the, boards, the Board of Nursing asks. And one of which is, have you ever been arrested for anything, basically, misdemeanor or felony? If you have, you need to do this declaratory order for eligibility. So how do you do that? You go to www.boardofnursing. So it's bon.tx.org, uh, I'm sorry, .gov for gov. The Board of Nursing has a form. It is downloadable. You can print it out. And there is a small fee. Being a state agency, uh, that fee does change, but there is a fee. And you're basically telling them or declaring to the Board of Nursing, you do have something in your background and you would like to go to nursing school. Um, they will investigate that. They will make sure you're telling the truth. If they, def if they uh, decide that you uh, can go to nursing school, that is between you and them, and they will send you uh, a letter or a blue card that says you may attend nursing school. Now the trick is to get that done in a timely fashion, it takes a while. I recommend you start that at any time. You do not have to be a nursing student to start this. You can start the process um, because it can take 45 days to six months to get this completed. So, what if you were arrested and charges were dismissed? You still need to declare it. What if you were juvenile? You still need to declare it. We tell people that because we have had people to complete a program but yet cannot get licensed. And we don't want to see someone waste time and tuition if they cannot get their license. So we're very upfront about this. All nursing programs in the nation have to do this. Um, basically, you have to declare any criminal activity now, traffic tickets, you do not have to declare. Minor in possession of alcohol, um, you do not have to, or, or tobacco, you do not have to declare. And that's it. Everything else you pretty much have to declare. For more specific rules on that, you want to visit our website and look at those Board of Nursing questions that are asked of you. Let's talk about the curriculum. 
The curriculum, a lot of people want to know, well, what will I be learning and how long will it take? It's a summer, fall, spring semester program. So the summer semester is 12 hours. If you already have intro to anatomy and physiology, then that backs your hours down to eight. So it's eight hours, semester hours. If you do not have the biology, you have to take it in the summer. We will make sure that there is a section open for you to register. Um, and that, that happens not a, not a lot, but sometimes students do so well on the test, they, don't, they, they can take this later. But this is your only chance. It is in the summer. So in the summer, it is Monday through Thursday. Um, we do have basic nursing skills. That is a class with some laboratory time. Um, gerontology, vocational nursing concepts, mental health, and then clinical training. We're actually in the hospital. So in the summer, you have two class days and two clinical days. There is not school on Friday. So some people find they're able to work, hold down maybe a part-time job uh, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, for, like Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday. But you don't want to be too tired and come into where it involves or interferes with Monday's class. Um, when we talk about the fall semester, it's a little different. It is a longer, much different. The summer schedule is here. Um, for the most part, Monday and Thursdays is a full day. So you're talking 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're in a classroom, be it Temple or Taylor. Wednesday and Tuesday are clinical days. So you're out at noon, but you do have to show up at the clinical site really early. So you may have to plan daycare uh, activities or pet care accordingly. Um, no later than 7 in some clinical sites, you'd be actually be a little earlier, like 6.45. So that kind of gives you an idea. In the fall semester, um, this is the one that is the, the longest as far as calendar-wise, but also um, the semester hours. It's a total of 18. So we have maternity, advanced nursing skills, pharmacology, health and illness. This is like pathophysiology and disease process. And then clinical training in the hospitals again. So with this a curriculum of 18 semester hours, again, you have didactic or classroom, and then you have um, two to three days of clinical. So the fall hours, a little different. The clinical days start on Monday. No class day, it is an actual clinical day. So Monday and Tuesday, boom, you go to the hospital. You gotta be there bright and early, 6.45, 7 o'clock at the latest. And the clinical days are pretty long. You're gonna go to around um, 4.20 at the latest. We do break for post-conference, uh, post-clinical conference, and we go into a classroom and discuss the clinical activities of the day. Wednesday and Thursday are class days in the fall currently, and notice it goes starts back up at 8 a.m., and we try to get you out of here at 4.10, 4.15 uh, at the latest. And these are classroom hours. You do need your books, and you have a, a clinical grade as well as a classroom grade, and we'll discuss that in a minute. Friday, currently, and it is subject to change, but Friday, we have traditionally went 7 a.m. to noon, and if we continue on Fridays, that also is a clinical day. So it is Friday's a half clinical day. So as you can see, there's not much room to work. It is a full-time program, especially in the fall and spring, so really you need quality family time, personal time to unwind come Saturday or Sunday, so we really don't recommend that you are working unless you absolutely have to. The spring and final semester, we call it, like to call it third base. When you're on third base and you're headed home, we have pediatric class, nursing health and illness three, which is a continuation of pathophysiology, mental illness, professional development. That computer course, if you have not completed that, would have to be taken in the spring. And then the clinical training, which again, um, is in the hospitals and selected specialty clinics. So with this, you're looking at 17 semester hours. If you have that computer course, it brings it to 15 semester hours. That too, folks, is a full-time load. So do not recommend that you uh, try to work. You do get a week off for spring break. And I didn't mention, you usually get a couple weeks for the Christmas break. Um, so this semester tends to go by quick with spring break and a few holidays in the spring. And we tend to have graduation and pinning ceremonies around the middle of May, third week in May, tends to be the norm, so that we can prepare for a new class in June. 
Okay, so the spring hours are very similar, you'll notice, to the fall hours. And the really only exception is instead of 4 o'clock, the classes are 2 and 3. So you would get out Wednesday at 2 rather than this uh, fall, it's 4. And Thursday, 3 o'clock rather than 4. But the start times are the same. Three clinical days at 7, classroom at 8, start time. You end up curriculum-wise with over 700 hours and in class, uh, clinical or hands-on, uh, we, we tend to be close to 900 hours. So that's a lot of hands-on time in hospitals, nursing homes, specialty clinics, uh, operating rooms, emergency rooms. We really try to give you all the specialty training we can to prepare you for the workforce. Keep in mind, I mentioned didactic training, and that is classroom training. In the classroom, we have um, certain grade point average we need to keep up, and that is above 75 Anything above 75 is passing for Temple College Nursing. If we drop below 75, then we're failing that particular, at that particular time. We have A, B, C, and F. We do not have a D. So 74, let's say in pharmacology class, a 74 would be an F. A 75 would be a C. So we do encourage you, if you drop below a 75, the teacher will usually notify you. And if it's at midterm, you will get a midterm failure notice to let you know you're not passing that particular class. We'll try to work with you and find your weak areas and bring that grade up the best we can. But keep in mind, 75 or better. Now for clinical, it's the same way. You get a numeric grade after a thorough evaluation by your clinical instructors. Similar to a job performance review if you're at work and your supervisor gives you your yearly evaluation, very similar. So you do get evaluated on your interpersonal skills, your clinical skills, how well do you take care of your patients, um, medication administration, and so on. And that too needs to be above 75. So if you pass a didactic part in the classroom, in the clinical portion, in the facilities of our uh, training uh, partners, then you can set for graduation, um, final exams, and take your licensing exam. Now, there's got to be some questions that you are having, and please look at our uh, Temple College website. That's templejc.edu. You can go to academic programs, to healthcare, click on vocational nursing, and on vocational nursing, we have a lot of questions that you may ask already there. Also, please feel free to call our campus secretaries. These are vocational nursing secretaries. Give us them a call. Uh, they're expert at answering questions. And hopefully we can resolve any question that you might have. We really appreciate you watching this video and learning more about our program. We hope it's the program right for you and it's a good fit for you. Again, campus in Temple, campus in Taylor. We hope that we can be a campus that will accommodate you. We are a really good nursing program and we hope to see you in the fall. Good luck on your test.